All right, yeah. listen up. Turn on the way. Shut your Shh. mouth. Shh. Our name is Mr. Roy. R O Y. It's not that fucking hard, you fucking imbeciles. Oh, all right. Wow, yeah. there you uh, are, dude. We've been looking all over. What are you? Are you teaching this class? Yeah, yeah. Well, a teacher wrote in and wanted advice on how to be a better teacher, and so I crawled in through his window. It's a ground floor thing, and I figured it's better to show than to tell. Yeah, but you're not a teacher. No. I know. I think a better idea would be if we gave this guy some advice, not took over his class uninvited. (laughs) Shut him! I'll fucking kill you all! Yeah, let's go. Come on. Come on, Ben. Come with us. We got a podcast. And you kids... You gotta work on your lockdown drills. You can't let Ben's in through the window. Come on. Seriously, dudes, eyes and ears. We're getting big, our worries, our nicks has had some cake. But the quality is We're getting big, our worries, our nicks has had some cake. But the quality is We're getting big, our worries, our nicks has had some cake. But the quality is You are listening to the internet's premier podcast for people named Tyler. If you can find a podcast out there with more Tyler listeners, I'll tell you what, take a picture of it, send it to us, and we will beat that by 30%. We will add Tyler's at no expense to you, the listener. This is the Grolic Saves the World. My name is Adam Caton Holland. I'm Ben Roy. And I'm Tyler Tyler. (laughs) See, I'm already I'm already giving us a head start. Yes, extra bonus Tyler's. Yeah. This is a podcast about bettering your world. And if you're named Tyler in this world, uh, you're welcome for this podcast because your world's already aces. You got the best name on the planet, Tyler. It, 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 it's crazy. Easygoing name. I mean, I remember easy to say. Yeah. Nice to hear it. Nice to it, nice to spend time with Tyler's. I always love hanging out with the Tyler. Oh, I love a Tyler. Tyler's a wild man that'll just fuck. Nobody him. says no to a Tyler. Nope. Tyler doesn't take no for an answer either. You're like, Tyler, I can't go back out on that road with you. I can't go down that road. And Tyler pushes you down that road. And Tyler yeah. says, you got more in you. Tyler will get that but extra in an 20%. encouraging way. Yes. In it's an not encouraging a way. way. Tyler will get that extra 20% performance out of you. That's 100%. what a Tyler does. And uh, 100%. That's the, the Tyler 20%. bump. It's quantifiable. Yeah, it's they call it the Tyler bump. Uh, you could just say it 120%. Right, because I was saying 100% right. to you saying Tyler will get 20% more out of you. So just to save time, we could say 120%. 120%. That's how we have to say it when addressing Tyler's. Uh, Tyler, 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 Tyler. And that's how it works. You know, That is it's, how it's you... That uh, simple. That's how you get the Tyler's uh, into the pod, everybody. How are you? How are you guys doing? This is this is uh this. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a little bit. It's good to see your faces. Here we are. It's been a week since I've seen your faces. It's nice. Here we are. Oh no, I saw you on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Should we talk about the? Should we talk about the heckler on Saturday? Oh, we had a Grolix heckler. I'll, yeah, let's talk about that because normally Grolix crowd best crowd in the in the comedy game. I'll tell you what, we are spoiled, rotten. With our Grolix crowds at our live show at the Bug Theater, I mean, so good, so, great crowds. No, we exactly are to the point that like the people behave well. They're smart. It's a good audience. Everybody who comes in to, to play the shows is just like, man, this is a what a refuge. And I think right. we've gotten spoiled. We forgot that people are dumb <laughs> and they they don't know how to behave. Well, it's also at comedy it, shows. Yeah, I think it's also. Uh, it, like indicative now the heckling or people chiming in of the clip culture. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. There are a few people who have done crowd work very well in their lives. And then every shitty comic on the planet now has been like, that gets you likes talking to the crowd, having some lazy, boring exchange with somebody in the crowd Gets you likes. I'm going to sell my soul to this, even though I fucking hate it. And I'm not that. Also, good it's at a it. way to generate comedy clips without burning your material. No one is prolific enough to be able to generate uh, material at the pace of social media. So you week. have to resort to crowd work clips if you want to be cranking out clips daily, every other day. So sadly, I think that's part of it, too. It's just you can't. It does. Uh, it sucks. You can't. And no, and I'm going to tell people comics would just, I, 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 maybe I'm not, I'm speaking for every, I'm not speaking for everybody, but 
I would say after all of this time of doing it and having a fair amount of success, I would just prefer to get up on stage and tell my material. Just do my jokes. I just want to do my jokes that I've written. I don't want to shit out a plastic bag of my neck and gizzards for you to enjoy the crappy (laughs) part. It's the the crappiest part of of the set. It's like, oh, I see. I see. It's the neck and the innards. It's, It's the shit that's like, uh, you know, like it's, it's included. It's filler. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. And a lot of times it's just, it's like just small talk. Yeah. You two uh, together, you on a date. Who gives a fuck, dude? <laughs> like who can, no one bought tickets being like, I want to know if those two over there are a couple. I've been staring at them all night. Are they a couple? Are they here together? That's what I just spent $22 if to find out. If only some truth no. sayer could get to the bottom of this. Yeah. But I disagree because I think what we're seeing is, I I mean, I know like audiences do love it when you get into the crowd and you start fucking with them or you do something, they eat it up. I mean, it's, yeah, but they also love hearing jokes that you prepared ahead of time. I'm not saying it can be a whole set. I'm just saying they like it because I think I truly believe that people honestly believe that 90% of the time, the vast majority of the time, this is shit that the person is coming up with off the top of their head. And uh, when you see people who are prolific with this, it, that is not the case. That's not the fucking oh, case. It's it's crazy how predictable these rhythms are that you have so many stock responses that you can ask a random person in the crowd and something you will you will see, yeah, the same lines come out and come up and you're like, wow, conversation can be that predictable where you can just talk to a random person in the crowd and be fed the setup so you can deliver your like sweet dunk on them that you've delivered 200 times to other crowd members. It's bizarre, but I think all of us have seen that. I know we've seen it from local comics oh, here in yeah, Denver. You, where- see it, I, you see it from a particular, it got popular from a particularly annoying ginger comedian who loves to own hecklers. And he loves to post his videos of doing that. And he's never really owning it. It's just lazy fucking garbage. And it drives me fucking crazy. And I don't care. I don't care if any of them get upset about it. Like, fuck you guys. You're ruining stand-up comedy by posting this shit. And so ended up happening like fucking somebody at the Grolic show just started shouting out. And, and from the fucking- start of the show. And it was and this, yeah. it was this woman and she was just like, she said she she would say things like like it started out with with Tanya Sabrina who was on the show she started talking to her and Tanya's like a one liner comic she doesn't want to do this shit she wants to have her one liners out there that's she's got a great cadence like keep the one liners going and this yeah. woman starts yelling shit at her so Tanya has to sort of address it to like get through the moment back to the show and then by the time I'm on stage this woman's just like full tilt unhinged yelling shit and i can hear her murmuring like during my entire bits so i just hear this like voice in the background and i can see sections of the audience like looking at her and so there was this one joke i did that couldn't have been more classic comedy it was just like set up pause punchline it was just like a very by the book joke and i did the setup and there was a pause and i start the punchline and she like yells some shit out right then right then that's had to, the fucking worst. Yeah. And it was like, oh. so now my punchline has been you half the crowd didn't hear it because they heard your dumb shit. You like ruined it. And we we do 10 new minutes of jokes every month. So like we're in our heads about this. We're really trying to sell you this material. It's new. It's not like polished yet. So I needed I needed the 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 generosity of silence. And this woman just couldn't do it. So I had to just unload on her and tell her to shut the fuck up. Then I also learned this woman was like sitting in front of my behind my wife and my wife was shushing her and she was like threatening my wife. It was just like, who? Okay, to this person, if you're listening, don't come to my show. Don't come to the girl. But here's the thing. Then I learn after the show that this person is on my comps list. Yes, it was (laughs) like it it was a Ben comp. Somebody that my roommate's friend knows that my roommate had never met. Who did all this? And that's an especially shitty fucking thing to do. Wow. I've had that happen. I I comp people into the comedy works and my friend brought a bunch of uh, their friends and they got so drunk they got kicked out yep. and they yeah. were on my guest list. And I was, yeah, I mean, that feels 
the worst. Yeah, that's You're poisoning a your own level well. Of shitty and unappreciative. And as Alex, yeah. definitely. As Alex, who runs the bug, said after the show, "Worst comp ever." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> let's let's put her photo out and just put worst comp ever beneath it." Worst, yeah. comp. I, I ever. don't understand wow. that. If somebody gave me a ticket to a show uh, that they're performing on. Maybe that's part of the problem. It has no value for you because you got it for free. Yeah, so it's like, all okay, what do I care? Shows. This person's just a monster. Behave well, <laughs> tip well. You got a free fucking ticket. If and for to people the, listening yeah, out, out there, and for people listening out there, you are not helping stand up shows by fucking heckling. Listen, if the comic is a crowd work comic and is talking to you, I fully understand that. That is not the same as just barking shit during so- the setup of somebody's joke. Like that is not the same thing. This is totally different. And I yeah. and it and, drives and, me fucking crazy. And if the comic wants you to talk, you will know. They'll ask you, they'll engage with you. Then that's the only time you should talk during a show is if the comic wants to talk to you. And you will know because they'll come at you, not the other way around. So as a lesson, yeah, generally or they'll speaking, ask a question. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I have parts of my set where I've asked the audience specific questions and asked them for like a specific answer. It's great. And then they can answer and you can have you can chat a little bit about it and then you know you move on. It can it can happen in a totally normal, you know, participatory way. It doesn't need random yelling from from out in the darkness like what yeah what and it's the to, equivalent yeah, of talking during somebody's backswing you know what i mean you're like there's this moment where you're i'm generating power here motherfucker. no i'm just kidding anyway no, that's, pretty good. It just that's, a, good, that's a good nuts. analogy i like that but let this be yeah. a psa uh don't talk at growl shows don't talk at any comedy show unless spoken to that's just the general fucking rule and uh you that's know who just would never a rule do something of like public that? performance tyler a Tyler would never do something. No, like you that. don't find that from Tyler. There's no Tyler's, Tyler's no, know the etiquette. They're enforcing the rules in the crowd on their own. Absolutely. Tyler is the one that turns around and is like, shut the fuck up. Exactly. You know what I mean? Tyler's it, always Tyler. got your back. <laughs> yeah. And your front. So, oh, yeah. Uh, he's covering, he's yeah. covering your 12 inches. Whatever that means. That, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. That right. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of asking anyway, questions, we... an appropriate forum for asking them is this podcast. We are blessed with listeners who want our advice because we are experts in everything. How, many, how much more do we have to fucking prove to you? To let you know that we are experts in everything. We have combined over a hundred years of doctoral experience, yep. as well as collectively 17 honorary honorary degrees yep. from various reputable learning institutions. Some of it us is crazy. are in academia still. Some of us are in the field practicing. The point is there is so much expertise expertise and teeth oozing out of this podcast <laughs> you'd be a fool you'd be a fool not expertise. to write us for anything anything you need help yeah with. as adam said some of us are still learning andrew yep. uh some of us what? are on faculty <laughs> yep. and some of us are still in the lab with a pen and a pad trying to get the damn label off that's right that's you know 100% I, and right. that's Yes, I'm doing research. Um, so this is this is going to be great. This, I'm at the I'm university, so but I haven't got tenure because I haven't published lately. And uh, no. that's not a good look. So I am yeah. desperately mm. trying to get articles published. You've got publishing make- fright. You've always had publishing for right. You just hover the mouse over the publish button and you're like, I can't do it. Save draft. That's what you do. You save draft. <laughs> yep. Um, but anyway, we do have another question. We have another question from a listener, and I'm loving these folks. Keep sending them in. We'll answer your questions. Let's hear this letter. Let's uh, let's lower the Ron shield. Ron, if you'll if you can unscroll the letter that we received. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Yes. Keep lowering it. Hello. Hi. Hello, Ron. Hello. Good to see you. And, and I, I think oh, you're so, this will be the new so trend. Dewey this will be the this new morning. trend. Ron will read the letters uh, because, once again, the three of us cannot read. But Ron will read the letter <laughs> and we will then uh, offer our expertise. And Andrew, you are uh, honorary is how Ben said expertise. it. Honorary. Yes, we have expertise. That have expertise. Yes. yes. Andrew, yes. Uh, Ron, Andrew significant mentioned. Significant expertise. 
That's right. You are glistening, Ron, as the dehumidifier yeah. in your cage gone out again because you are <laughs> wet. <laughs> Quite wet. <laughs> I was doing Pilates. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. Thank yeah, you. Nice. Yeah. Well, hit us with this letter. I'm excited. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so this is a this is a letter from Patrick. Patrick's from Montreal. He says he's been a fan from the beginning and continues to find comfort and I'm not overstating just joy from this podcast. Oh, oh thanks, Patrick. Patrick that's that's I like sweet. Patrick, Patrick already. That's Patrick, that's right up there with Tyler's for my money. I, agree. I think we should shift to be a podcast for Patrick's. Podcast I'm, for I'm, Patrick's. Yeah, I'm I'll take a Patrick. It doesn't roll off the tongue as well as Tyler's, but I'm Can we just talk Pat. about how wonderful Canadians are? What a great set of neighbors you know montreal what what a great city oh that's a great city that's one of my favorites that's a favorite city of mine yeah i love it you want me to continue reading this letter or what no no i don't care i think we got it all. i think we got enough yeah you know what i think we got got enough enough. (laughs) (laughs) patrick it's a great question it's a question man have asked himself and of god for years no go ahead yes yes please uh he has a question for the three of us and me who uh He's nine years into teaching high school. I Side note, I taught for almost eight years. He teaches science and chemistry. He spent most of this current year revamping and reworking his materials and relearning and defending to himself how I do what I do. He has a style of teaching. He's feeling shook uh, with his style of teaching. From the start, he was given the same advice he's often heard given to comedians. It takes about 10 years to really know what you're doing up there. So he's trying to improve and he's working to get his variety of hours as tight as possible, so to speak. He's working on his set uh, as Mm. a teacher. Mm. And so he says, every time that you three have spoken about your experience with experiences with education, varied as they are, um, he's really leaned in and wanted to know more. So he's at, here's his question. What worked about school for the three of you, if anything, what did you take from school and what do you wish you could have gotten from a teacher, if anything, that maybe would have improved your experience? Uh, he'd love to hear our thoughts. Uh, with his thanks, Patrick. Oh, interesting. Wow. These wow. are deep questions. Fuck. Yeah. Well, he's, so it's he's, an, he's it's all right. an education episode. We're going we're gonna to find out how you guys learn, what you wish you'd learn from school uh, and uh, and see what sort of advice we can give him as a teacher who's trying to improve himself as a teacher over time. I This is the first Piece I've heard cake. this uh, this letter. Uh, I think, Adam, you hadn't heard it either. Had Never heard, heard this it? letter. This is this is news to me. This is tough. All right. Well, but, all right. But we, not only are experts, we played teachers on TV. We know what we're talking about. So <laughs> we'll come back in the second <laughs> half. We'll answer this. But I'm going to premiere something here on the Grolic Saves the World. We all know we pivoted to a weekly format this year. There's been some style shifts. The episodes can go in a number of different directions. With these letters, with advice to the listeners, I've enjoyed the episodes, but I do think it's lacking a competitive edge. So I propose this episode, we will offer our advice and we will crown a winner of best advice on this episode. I like and it. The way we do that, the way we do that is that each of us gets to vote for who we thought did the best, and you cannot vote for yourself. So I can vote for Andrew, I can vote for Ben, and vice versa. In the event of a tie, oh. we will lower the Ron Shield, we will bring him out, he will crown a winner in the event of a tie. So wow. at the end of each episode, at Adam, we will not only a game. Patrick, we will have helped ourselves uh, by learning that I am the best at giving advice, and that I think in the end of right. the year, uh, the right. wins will reflect that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, I what don't... do you think? Except, I mean, I'm about I, I, to I, advice your ass off, dude. Accept it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I like guess I don't fire. really have a choice because yeah, two out of three Grolix vote wins. Ben, this is the new format for a letter okay. episode. We will okay. crown. Yeah, I mean, that's I do it. It so, seems. Well, let's take a break. We got to take a break to, to pay some bills. If you're a Patreon yeah, member, yeah. enjoy the ad-free break. But if you're not a Patreon loser. member, check out our Patreon. Uh, you're about to hear a little ad for it. We'll see you shortly in Act Two. So win. stick around. No, the problem is, is that it's just people asking for advice. It just seems needlessly well, competitive. Just a loser doing loser talk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Hey, do you love the Grolic Saves the World, but are sad because you're not getting enough of it? Boy, do I. Well, great news. You can get all sorts of bonus content on our Patreon. Like what? Tell them, Ben. Act 4. Ad-free episodes, birthday shoutouts, exclusive merch, stronger, more painful erections, our pod within a pod, boy crazy, decreased A1C levels, photos and videos, bonus content, and so much more. Okay, I'll do it. No, <laughs> kick to me. Say, how do I, how do, I do it? How do I sign up? We're not trying to sell it to you, Andrew. You don't have to. Jesus. Oh, well, I mean, it sounded good. Okay, how do I sign up then? <sighs> Fuck it. You can sign up now by visiting patreon.com forward slash Grolic Saves. I do want to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> we are back for act two. And thanks to the magic of podcasting. Roughly 72 seconds have elapsed. We have a listener letter from Patrick in Montreal trying to better himself as a teacher, has consulted three fictional teachers from television on how on how they might go about doing that. So uh, the gist of this letter boils down to these questions here at the end. They want to know about our varied education experiences, uh, like what worked about school for us, what took us out of it. What do we wish we could have gotten from a teacher, if anything, that could have improved that experience? So so let's dig into this. And as Adam said, uh, this isn't just us yammering advice. This is competitive advice, yep. competitive professional advice Three will that enter. one of us will be the best at. The best Three at. Three will so, enter the advice um, dome. Only one will emerge victorious, bathed in the blood. Exactly. Of bloodied, bloodied tongue hanging out of their mouth from talking so much. Arm dislocated um, from the but fight. We're but okay with that more. because that is what we signed up for when we became truth gladiators. Truth, truth gladiators. gladiators. This sounds like. This sounds like a problematic uh, website. Yeah. <laughs> ben, is this where you've been getting your news yeah, from it's lately? On Truth Gladiators. Gladiators. <laughs> Um, is this where you, is this where you're yeah. suspicious of vaccines? Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to punt the the ball at someone, Adam. Why don't you kick it off? You propose this competitive angle. You can dive into the pool first. Okay. Well, there's so many questions from. Pat, you know what I mean? But it seems to me like the macro issue here is Pat is 10 years into teaching and wants to do better or change it up, uh, change their approach right. because they feel like they could be doing better. So first of all, I want to say kudos to Pat because how many teachers yes. do you know that are just like complacent, punching a clock, trying to get to whatever 30 years so they can retire with a pension and like, fuck it, they don't care. They just do the core curriculum. There, I had so many teachers that were just bored and tuned out, and you could tell it immediately. So kudos to Pat for being thoughtful and and, and your approach and wanting to do better. Already, I think you're better than most teachers for, for doing just that. Um, yeah, just for even caring. I agree with that totally. Yeah, for Definitely. questioning how you're doing it and for wanting to do better and for caring and being self-aware. That means it makes you a good person and teacher, I can tell immediately. Um I do. Th what are you laughing at, Andrew? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing at producer Ron's note in the chat that you're pandering, uh, pandering to the witness. And I agree. But, you know, whatever it takes to, not, to eke out that win, Pat whatever it takes. Patrick is not voting, is he? Patrick isn't voting. So maybe I'm just genuinely complimenting one of our listeners. <laughs> OK, Ron. proceed. Maybe you proceed. should go back <laughs> beneath the surface because I know we can't hear you, but we can see your fucking group chat. And I'm wondering if we can cloud that signal. So it doesn't work from under the ocean. <laughs> this, this truth gladiator is very, very contentious with the audience. He has a very contentious relationship with the people listening. Ben, you had something productive. You want us to go around and say what? Well, uh, uh, there were these three questions beforehand that I believe Patrick was asking us about our own paths um. and paths and pasts. And so I think we should answer these questions before we give our advice okay. uh, to Patrick as to how to better that. That'd be just my suggestion, because honestly, I'm curious, even though I know all of this. Well, so Patrick asked a number of questions, Ben. So what do you think we should say, like our academic experience or like? Well, he asked these questions. What worked about school for you, if anything? Let's go around. Let's answer these questions real quick for us. Uh, Adam, what what about school worked for you? 
if there was anything. Did you do know. well in school? I I uh I did great in school. I was a very good student. I enjoyed school. Like I liked going to school all the time. I liked the social element of it. I liked um I liked learning and I liked trying to get the A. I was into it. It was like a competitive thing for me and I wanted to fucking be in the top of the class. Like I just I had I had that in me and I wanted to. I went to like a really shitty private school that was very hard where the education was great, but I hated it socially. Then I went to a public high school where the education wasn't as great and then I I loved it socially. And then I went to college and I had a <laughs> very strange experience, but walked away from loving college. And then I was done with school. I never went back to school again after that. I did do some substitute teaching right when I got to Denver. So I, I had about two years of substitute teaching that hardly qualifies no me as a shit. teacher. shit. I forget about that. What did you teach mostly? Dude, I taught everything. I taught everything. Because like, I got good at teaching little kids, in this, specifically like uh, l- Mexican kids who speak Spanish. So I would teach in bilingual classes like four, five, six. Uh, ECE in those classes. And then a lot of teachers realized I was like capable and spoke Spanish. So they'd start requesting me for their vacation days. So I'd get like two week stints at schools while the teacher was off on vacation. And I'd get to like know these classes. And then one teacher did that a bunch and they had a position opening up for a paraprofessional in their class, like their assistant. And they asked me if I wanted it. And I said, yes, I took the job. And then literally the next week I got offered a full-time writing job at Westward. And so I had to, at the newspaper I wrote for, so I had to go back and be like, I'm sorry, I want to be a writer more than I want to be a teacher. So I was almost a full-time teacher. I had said yes, but then I, I, I stepped it back. You were also almost a writer. Andrew, what (laughs) worked (laughs) about (laughs) school swish? For you, <laughs> uh, if anything, Andrew, what about wow. you? Wow. Uh, what worked for me? Not much. Not, not going. Well, that, I, I shouldn't say that. that because uh, I I was a great student for all of my educational career up to sophomore year in high school. I uh, I went to a very tiny uh, Lutheran elementary and junior high, even though my family wasn't. Lutheran. That's that's where I went. Uh, there were like six kids in my eighth grade class. It was it was wild. But um, really I got a, I got a great dating, huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Pretty small pool. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have to worry about that. I was not uh, I was not dating anyone in in eighth grade. But despite the fact I had a ripping mustache, <laughs> so. I I got you know great personalized attention and small classes and a good education I guess except where science would be concerned in a Lutheran school but uh, uh, <laughs> it that, so that that all that all worked for me in high school what worked for me was kind of I don't know the teachers that could like see that that I was checked out and not interested. It it just needed to be things that I was interested in. Like I took a science fiction literature class where we wrote science fiction stories, crushed it, never missed a class, killed it. Art class, loved it. I've never missed an art class. So it was like the things that I was interested in, those worked for me. Uh, And the things that I was not interested in did not work for me at all. When did you leave school? Oh, I never left school. I just got kicked out every semester from sophomore year through for senior what, year. Missing oh, days of, for missing days for like not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. For, for ditching class so much that they would, that they kept just booting me out. Sounds like you got an A in being cool. Yeah, I was down to the cattails, smoking cigarettes with my friends. Why are you oh, smoking heard about in the, the cattails cat- and smoking cigarettes. Stop with your smoking in the cattails. Dude. The name of this That's podcast where we smoke, is dude. smoking in the cattails. Ben, what was your educational journey, and how did it lead you to the cauliflower ears that you have today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congrats to you for being brave enough to put headphones on right now. How painful uh, for you! Shut up. 
Anywho, uh, what worked for school? Well, I went to Catholic grade school, Holy Infant Jesus, shout out. Uh, Is that the name? That, that, was, Is that, the name? that was the name of my grade school, was Holy Infant it sounds Jesus. Like, it sounds like the last thing a trucker yells when losing their brakes on black ice. Holy Infant Jesus. <laughs> nope. I went to Holy Infant Jesus, which I'm sure is now a sex scandal factory, given that Ooh. there's about 20, <laughs> 25 years elapsed. Kids are just starting to come forward. Thanks, Catholic Church. Um, and I went to a very small high school in Maine, Winthrop High School. Go Ramblers. Uh, we were the Winthrop High School Ramblers. Uh, what worked for Can me? I tell in you, I made I made hundred and fifty dollars on the Ramblers last night on DraftKings. No, you didn't. Did you really? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, girls volleyball. Ah, well, those those kids are all gonna piss hot. I can tell you that. Not a single one of them is not on growth hormone. Whatever, um, it's money in the bank, dude. Bet on the Ramblers. Uh, no, I went to school. This is true. My my mascot, our high school mascot, was a broken down bus. It was a bus with its tires popped and its what? tongue hanging out and like crossed eyes. And it was like just all <laughs> shitty. What was, that was our, what was the name of this mascot? What was his name? Rambler? It was The name was the Rambler. <laughs> is that what a Rambler <laughs> means? A broken down bus is a Rambler? No, a Rambler is somebody no. who wanders. But yeah. the, the story behind it was that when our school was started, it was so small, it didn't have its own gymnasium. So every game was an away game. We had to go away for every game. And so, so this bus goofy got bus got you up. there, huh? And it was like run down <laughs> flat tires. I have a photo that's, of it. I'll have to find insane. it and I'll send it to Ron. Yeah, it was it was bonkers. That's like uh, and also baseball. was very, very, um, it was also very prophetic as to the level of education one would have got at Winthrop. Uh, high school, which was a tired, broken down form of just exhausted <laughs> uh, regurgitation of crap. Pa. I didn't connect with it. most of it, except um, I, like Andrew, connected with drama. I was very involved with the theater program, music. Uh, I had a civics class that I loved. Debate and politics was something that I, I got a really good, the rest of it, I flunked, but, uh, and I ended up having to go back and get my diploma after I didn't walk with my class. I didn't get my diploma. I never wore a cap and gown or anything, but I will say I flunked my physics class. I took it twice, but he may have been one of my favorite teachers. I didn't do the required work. I didn't do well in the class, but he cared and he tried and he made the material interesting. What I struggled with all the time was homework. I just was not good at the homework part of it and sitting still. I'm just not good with that, as you both have witnessed. So I think that was what didn't work. Um, so like, I think what I wish I could have gotten from other teachers, and you guys can answer this, is just, and more from that, is more hands-on learning, more lab-type like stuff, more things. Because I did well in labs. Um, it, I had to be standing and then senior year, I got moved to a vocational school and I did very well at that. I went to a Votech school. So halfway through the day, I'd get on a bus and they'd be like, see you later, morons. <laughs> and they'd send us to a school where I, my entire senior year, I got to run a cable access television station. Dude, That's Ben what was I did. telling me about this when we were driving around Maine this December Tell tell our listeners what you did that was the most popular thing ever on this cable access network. This I kills me. I produced a program, a tele. I call it a program because that's what it is. Yeah, I produced a program that aired for hours, two or three hours blocks. That was just I would go out and I would set up a camera on a tripod and I would film foliage. Just trees blowing and um, incredible main foliage. And then I would sync it with classical music and I would loop this for hours and I put it on. It became the most popular thing we ever did yeah. on that. People, <laughs> if it if it stopped, people would it be like, called high as fuck with Ben Roar. People were like, <laughs> where's the leaves? Like people loved <laughs> the love leaf it. show. And I did that as a senior in high school and I got paid to drive around the state and get fucked oh. up and lay in a field and just take hours of footage of leaves blowing. It's the best job I ever had. 
And uh, Andrew, what would have improved it for you? It, or what did you wish you had got more from teachers? So what took me out of high school was not high school. Uh, it was it was kind of my own doing. Uh, as we've established as long Long-time listeners of this pod will know. I used to have full-strength ears, big old ears, honk, big old honking ears. And in between my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I got plastic surgery on my ears to put them back. Uh, my parents were like, we'll either buy you an Apple IIe computer, a used car, or we'll get your ears fixed. It was like a, a, a true uh, crossroads of life for future Andy. Choose one of these paths. And I chose the ears because I was a freshman in high school and stupid. And I thought that that meant something important for my life. And I didn't like being teased. So I got the plastic surgery on my ears. Uh, and it like radically changed my interactions with other people. I had so many friends after that. And so all I wanted to do was hang out with friends and be social in high so school. So you'd been like that was something I didn't really have because you were like self conscious. Yeah, or- I had literally like one friend. All my freshman year, uh, just awkward, got teased for my big ears, you know, just kind of, but I got straight A's. I was like crushing it grade wise. And then I got my ears uh, fixed and it kind of, I just felt like, oh, well, it was probably, I mean, obviously, you know, I wasn't being teased for my ears, but it also probably let me think like, oh, well now I can, you know, maybe be more outgoing. But so I just wanted to spend all my time socializing. And once like once I didn't like a class, I just like didn't want to go to it anymore. And I was like, no one's going to make me go. I'm just not going to go. I hate this class and I'm not going to go. And so I just got in this habit of just ditching and just hanging out with my friends, meeting new friends, just holding court in the cafeteria. Uh, I would go to school every day. It wasn't like I was ditching to be at home. Uh, I, I would go to school to hang out with my friends. So you, you, this, you had these sexy new ears. You turn into a high school fuck boy. You forget the books. You just want to be <laughs> out there being the bell of the ball now that you're all fucking hot. Yeah. That's what was going on? Yeah, exactly. But so I don't want, so it's not so much the school, but I will say this, like Ben kind of alluded to it. The fact that I had to take some classes that just didn't work with my brain, like math. I just couldn't, I've never been good with math. I've never, uh, anything beyond, you know, basic math. I just don't, my brain shuts down. I get overwhelmed. I get frustrated. I don't like it. It doesn't intrigue me. I, there are easy tools everywhere in the world for me to, to get around it. Um, and having to take it just, it just made me mad and frustrated. And I was like, I'm just not, why would I go for an hour and sit and feel stupid and frustrated with something that I have no aptitude for. And I don't, I don't want to do it. I'm I'm not going to go into a career using math because I fucking hate it. And my brain doesn't could sync somebody, up. Could with anybody it. have got through to you though, like a particular teaching style or anything? Do you think that would have got through to you with math? I think it would be something more applicable of like, okay, look, clearly, you know, you don't need to be learning algebra, advanced algebra, uh, these things like let's let's take a look at something that you maybe would want to use this applicably in life. Like, why don't we look at like statistics or something that yeah, or maybe I, you I might agree. Be My, uh, in- the math class that I did the best at and one of the better classes, the two other ones were I, I took a typing class. That's the best class I ever took was a keyboard class. I I can type really, really fast. It helped me get a lot of jobs being able to type. The other one was a business math class. That was an option for people who went to Votech. And I just basically learned like everyday type of math for like calculating how much money is in your bank account and like things like that. Now, this was obviously before we had digital ledgers that do it real time now. I mean, you that kind of stuff was like how to weigh yeah, your rent. I guess and just bills having and- some kind of application for it that made sense yeah. uh, would have helped. And math, especially, I was like, I will never use this. I will never. I still distinctly remember one of my math teachers. She was like, Math is the language of the universe. And I was like, Well, then I guess I'm the Helen Keller of the universe <laughs> because I don't <laughs> fucking get it. Andrew. I don't understand it. It's and- low hanging fruit, Andrew. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. Us. I was a I was a you sophomore. Just said, I mean, you're practically blind and deaf, and you're as old as she is. You are the, the universe. 
universe. I am the Helen Keller of this podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I would say that um, not having some kind of uh, real, real world application for the things that weren't working for me um, worked against me for sure. Was there anything, Adam, where you felt they dropped the ball? You said you liked school, but do yeah, you, where no, do you I th- think? I, I think I, I look. I, you, the kids you get are the kids you're going to get. Like Andrew was sort of in a place where he wasn't really into school, didn't want to do math and science. There's no like changing that. I think I was just more track driven in my head. I was like, you want the carrot of good college and that's the path. And I just, I didn't, I, I, I didn't feel rebellious in that way. Like that's something I wanted to succeed in. So I just kept going on, on the path. I was more willing to try to get the A, even if I didn't give a fuck about the subject. But I think that might be where we could maybe offer advice to Patrick is like, like Ben, you had mentioned that teacher physics that you failed twice and, and didn't care for it. But the teacher was Dr. Good. G, man, Dr. G. He was and, a, he was a doctor of physics and he was the man. He was the it, best. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like I took this chemistry class with uh, Mr. Zaragoza. We called him Z. And like I, t- I wound up liking that teacher enough that I took AP chemistry. I don't fucking know a goddamn thing about chemistry, but I, but I enjoyed this teacher and I had to have sciences. And I was like, well, then I'm going further down chemistry lane with this guy. What made, what made Dr. Z or what made Z such a good. Well, and this is what I teacher. think. This is my advice for Patrick. Okay. And I don't want you guys All glomming right. on. Cause this is my advice. Not I yours. <laughs> and I think this is true with comedy as well. Like, I, I've talked about this in my one man show, but I've once heard comedy described as a as a search to sound like yourself on stage, and I think people like a comedian when they're authentic and it sounds like you're listening to a dude who's just sharing themselves with you really naturally on stage. And I think a big part of that might be teaching as well. If you're just sort of very comfortable in yourself and sharing with your students your personality and wanting to learn about theirs as well and realizing that you can sort of make 50% of the class learning the whatever curriculum and the other 50% of the class engaging with these people, showing them who you are, learning who they are, and forming like individual relationships with these students beyond the teaching, that's when you're really going to start kicking ass. And so I, I think there's the kids who are be tuned out because they don't like the subject you teach. But if they like you and you listen to them, now they're way more inclined to come on board and learn what you're teaching them. So I guess my advice, and I'm sure this, this Patrick's already doing it, but like realize it doesn't all have to be curriculum in the book. Get to know your students, show interest in them. And give of yourself, show them who you are. And I think they'll like come along for the ride because they like you. So I think that might be a part of teaching that a lot of teachers forget about is that it's connections just on a human to human level with these kids and not about forcing equations down their throat. So that would be my advice. Yeah, that's going to be a tough hurdle to overcome on that first piece of advice. Mm -hmm. From a competitive standpoint, that's tough. That's Mm -hmm. a tough one to beat, Andrew. (laughs) Andrew, what do you say? Yeah, because it's hack, because that's what everyone would say. I'm going to do push-ups while you guys battle out for second place. (laughs) As a teacher, I think that it helps to show, and I'm kind of assuming that Patrick is a high school teacher. I believe he said as much in the letter. Um... But I think that uh, I'll just say for for high school, that's where I ran into trouble. It sounds like that's where maybe Ben hit a little trouble. Um, Yeah, he did say he was a high school science teacher. Um, I think that teenagers... They, it's a, that magical time where you start to think you know everything. I have a teenager right now uh, who's 14, and I see that more and more every day. They're like, oh, their like brain is expanding. They're like, I'm, I'm basically an adult who knows everything, even though they're still kids. We know they're kids. We see them, and we know they're kids. And I think one of the best things you could do for teenagers is to creatively show them how much they don't know. And... I'll never forget this lesson. It was freshman year, uh, a, a social studies class. The teacher gave us each a blank sheet of paper and he had us draw a line on it. He's like, just draw a line down the middle. And he's like, label that line 
Broadway. And he's like, now I want you to put a line on this map and label it Colfax. Now I want you to draw a line on this map and label it University. And he just, these are all streets here in Denver, Colorado, where we live. And so we sat there and he had us drawing these things. And then he took them all from us and held them up and he compared them to a map of our city. And they were so wrong because we had no fucking idea where all these roads were and how they were in relation to each other. And he was like, you don't even understand your own city. You don't even know where you live and where these streets are in relation to each other. How could you possibly know about the world beyond this city? And I never forgot that. And it has stuck with me kind of uh, my whole life. It was so effective. That's amazing. And, That's like such a and, such a cool way of telling you how dumb you are. Yeah, but it, but I mean, it, yeah. was, it was effective. It wasn't like, I mean, he kind of had like a kind of a smirky edge to it. You could tell he was having fun with it. He probably loved this that day of his class, but but it worked to show like there is something I can get out of this class because you have shown me what I don't know. And now this is your opportunity to fill in that knowledge uh, with that information. And I'll tell you what, it worked because ever since then, I love maps. I love remembering maps. I worked as a bike messenger. I worked off of a map in my pack. I've, I've always prided myself on learning a new city and where things are in relation to each other and how to like navigate them all from that one lesson that paid off in like realizing what I didn't know. And so if there are creative ways to illustrate to these little burgeoning know-it-alls what they don't know and what an opportunity it is for them to get that from you, like that, there are people who could respond to that because I think that you are working against that. You are working against them thinking, especially in the digital age where they're like, I'll get it on my phone. Like, what the fuck do I need to know about science for? There's got to be creative ways for you to show them how applicable science is and how the understandings of of science, the the building blocks of our understanding of life, and and how those gaps are are there to be filled in by your class. I think there were there will be kids who will be receptive to that okay mm. All right. damn interesting i'll tell you what y'all we got to rotate going last because the last spot <laughs> in a competitive advice section is fucking hard uh, <laughs> it's enough. a minefield how do Fair i not enough. become a hack but i think they're both great i just here's my thought on this high school is not about what you are teaching it has never been about what you were teaching. It is not about what you were teaching. It is about those fucking kids. That is the entire fucking job. Your job as a teacher should be to make kids feel good about themselves. That is the job of a teacher to me, in my opinion, because they are required by law to be there. So they may not connect with your information. We already know there are people who learn different ways who connect with math and science easier over languages or over art. We already know there are a bunch of different learning styles. To me, higher education is the place where you really get into the minutia and the nuances of, of whatever field it is that you are teaching. But to me, high school and part of why I connected so much with Dr. G was he was this guy who, even though I was not doing well in his class, made sure to tell me that that letter grade is not indicative of your intelligence. You are an incredibly bright kid and I've enjoyed having you in this class and you are going to do great things in your life. Believe in yourself. Like that resonated far more with me than anything else. Like that was where I had been told by an English teacher, one of my English teachers in, in high school that I was not going to amount to anything that stuck with me as a deterrent for going to school simply because I did not love him. And I loved reading and I loved writing. I was already writing lyrics and poetry. By that point, I was writing in bands. I shied away from the class that was teaching exactly what I loved most because of the asshole running it. And I went to science and spent more time around that person simply because they made me feel good about myself. And I respected the shit out of him. And I believed in myself when I left, even after having not done well in that class, 
I don't, I'm not saying you have to just give participatory ribbons or anything. I'm not expressing that. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, but I do think, remember for me, the point is to your kids are the most important thing. These kids go home sometimes to shitty homes, to parents who don't support them, to parents who talk down to them, to friend groups that are toxic and all of that. Simply being a light in their life is a huge, huge, huge thing that could influence their life for the, for the better. That to me is, I think what teachers forget. They're like, eh, we forget it as comics. My mind is a material. No, it's to give people a good time. Like that's what they come to a comedy club to laugh and have a good time. That's our job. And as a teacher, your job is to be there for kids to watch out for them, to try to build them up, even if they don't connect as much with what you're teaching. That could be just the way they learn. And, and you're in, you know, that's that's my opinion. Be there for your kids. Be real as honest and be as raw and, and real about yourself and down to earth. And I think that you can't miss with that. Um, that's, that's my opinion. Um, Damn, man, that's beautiful. It, that's very good. I really like that. Unfortunately, um, it was a regurgitation of what I said. Um, no, it was not yeah, a regurgitation, but, it, but, but what I more, did was... He made it still seem like a little bit more raw. I don't know. Ben's was more like <laughs> boots on the ground. Well, he's had know? to, to sort of that. workshop it a little bit. He took what my, the, the truth of mine and sort of added yeah. his He own. had some time. Yeah. He had some I time did have to, time to work on it, it, Adam. Yeah. And I want to say yeah. that I'm not saying that what you wrote was not an influence to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say you're the joy division to my sex pistols. Mm. And all I did was made it. And that no one is listening to either one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not adults, at least. You wear the shirt. Yeah. You wear the but shirt, you but you're not listening. You're not, you're not listening to that. You're, you're not putting yeah, it on. No, you're listening um, to the new Hives record. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I think these were all good examples, but I think we do have to vote on this. And more importantly, but I do think not pandering. Shout out to Patrick. Yeah, not pan. Shout out to Patrick Just for being interested in changing and being interested in connecting with these kids. Like Adam said, I do absolutely tip my cap because we, as parents, we see our teachers and we see the different teaching styles and teachers. And there's certainly teachers phoning it in. There's certainly teachers that are in over their heads and exasperated, and even having that desire to be like, I want to connect with these kids because I can't imagine trying to teach kids in this digital age and well, and teaching uh, is like it's, thankless it's and insane. it's underpaying and it's a hard fucking it's, field and it's and it's every day under yeah. attack yeah. it's under attack constantly by a group of people who want to belittle those people who want to intellectualize your kids who right. want to make them smarter and also you're teaching science which is a field that is become a punchline to a certain group of people. Not that it's a series of systems in place to hopefully fight against our own biases and to find a, 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 a way in which we gather answers in a way that is not shaped by our own personal biases. So like you're fighting an uphill battle. So yeah, what they said, thank you for trying to be better at this, but that is not the point of this podcast. We're not no. here for you. Patrick. Point is that one of us gave the best exactly. advice. We're here it's to time see who's best vote. at this. And that's I time will for first vote. in voting in advice. And I mean, just by the fact that Ben took what I did, put it in some flourishes, said it louder, said it different. I have to vote for Andrew. Andrew's advice was great. <laughs> uh, Thank you. I'll take the vote however I get it. I don't care. Just, just so that I didn't have to hear my thoughts again. I, I liked hearing something new. So Andrew, for you know, in contributing to the conversation, I give you uh, the Thank win you. between Thank Ben you. and I'll take it. Okay. I'll take yeah. it cool. that was however good. I can get a vote. Uh, Adam, why oh, don't gosh, you go and just a reminder. Uh, Andrew, why don't you go and just a reminder, uh, you're not allowed to vote for Adam. That's kind of weird. Um, Wait, so, or yourself. I can't vote for no, Adam. <laughs> nope, because Adam already voted. This and rule so, system's all over the fucking place. <laughs> what? I can't. No, but Adam I, voted, so, so you're not allowed to vote for him. That's how it I works. Voted. Oh, I oh yes. okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, this is a tough vote because I, you two, I feel like your advice, I would put it in the same camp of like connecting to your students on this human level. 
looking beyond the grades. So, gosh, who said it best? Who said the? Who said it? <sighs> who said best? it? Who said it first? Uh, who had the original idea? I, I, I don't. You don't have to plead your case. I'm voting Adam. Okay. I'm voting Adam. All yes. right, Ben. Okay. okay, I see how it is here. I will be the only person with real heart and a real constitution in this. I will cast my vote for the person that I think contributed the most to this conversation. Patrick, you have won no, today's advice. No, 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 no. There's Patrick not a single rule saying that it can't be the reader. Patrick's I, I, already I, uh, the a writer. Writer. The reader didn't give advice. The, uh, the reader didn't give writer, any advice. I'm sorry. The writer, the person writing in. Um, no, I, I will, I will <laughs> vote for Adam and not because yes. I didn't agree with Andrews. Uh, Andrew, I thought that it was great. Adam, I agree with yours. The, the, uh, it was hard. Yours was the most in line with, I think with you were more in line with what I would say. For sure. For I sure. would go even more hard line. That was what I was saying is your attention should I think the vast majority of the tension of teachers should be focused on making kids feel good about themselves because they don't get that in a lot of other avenues when you're a teenager. Uh, and, uh, and I think being relatable and, and, and being somebody they can trust and confide in who sees them as valuable is a huge thing. So I could, Adam, I think, yeah. I think you, I think you nailed it. I think as the inaugural, as the inaugural, uh, uh, competition of best advice, Adam. I think you took hold the W on this one. Thanks, man, and I really appreciate you being generous enough to to give me the win after I gave you so much shit. This is a new format. I got to be more diplomatic. It's like the TV show Survivor. Like we're playing against each other, but then if you're voted out, you are on the jury. So I still I can't really just be dig the knife into you too hard. And I appreciate that. I'm going to learn from this one and be a bit more diplomatic as we go through an effort. to Be get the, the win. Z that lives in all of us. Be, do what chemistry teacher Z would do and don't vote for yourself. Vote for I'm also somebody who knows where I came from. You know what I mean? Mm. I know where I'm born from. I Russian teacup my way out of you. It goes Adam was the big cup. Open it up. There's Andrew inside. There I am. Okay, so the just... lesson that we can say to Patrick, the, the <laughs> advice we have is uh, be there for your students. Don't worry so much about the curriculum. Worry more about these kids and relating to them, and that will endear you to them, and they'll be more inclined to listen to what you're saying because of that. And exactly. Andrew, suggests, Andrew suggests that you should have some sort of weird intellectual throwdown on day one where you <laughs> tell the, show them how superior you are in a weird category that they couldn't that's even not at all understand what I said. because they that's, can't drive yet. They're supposed to know the fucking sun is great. They're 14 and, years and old. I'm sad you that know you streets couldn't, better. Congratulations. Sad you couldn't Congratulations. Absorb, you know the streets better, you fucking 40-year-old absorb. man who can drive. These are 14-year-olds. <laughs> they barely know their fucking neighborhoods. So anyway, do something like that. Yeah, that's the point. That's the Andrews point. You was, barely know your get plastic surgery, get cool, check out. Start that fucking, was what Andrew is. <laughs> Start fucking fast and hard and check out. That's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. Patrick, we've said it. Thank it, you so much for writing. In. Thank you for writing in. Thank you so much uh, for what you do and for being a teacher and for undertaking such a hard job. You're the you fucking rule. As guys who got paid so much money to do it on television, we understand the struggle, my man. Wasn't that we crazy? We got it. paid like fifty times more than what this person yeah, so does. So we to get just it, dude. Imitate it. <laughs> we fucking get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to do the opposite of teaching to make people stupider. Yes. Oh my god. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Patrick. For anybody listening, if you have thoughts. Uh, on your experiences, please chime in on social media or if you subscribe to Patreon, let us know. We love to hear that stuff. We'll discuss it maybe in an act for some of your thoughts. If you need advice or you have questions you want three experts in literally any field to answer, we are here for you. We are here for you. And uh, let's listen to some live stand-up comedy. Let's cleanse the palate. We, we talked about how to make kids smarter. Let's make them fucking dumber. Huh? Let's do that. I'm just kidding. This stand-up? Yeah, some stand-up. But I'm just kidding. This next comic, uh, they are very intelligent and then made the very, very intellectual decision to focus almost entirely after that on 
stand-up comedy. Kudos to them. Yep. Uh, but it's our benefit because they are so funny. Uh, everybody, please enjoy this clip from Tanya Sabrina. And when we return, third actors, you're on deck. Best third act in the biz. We've got good news. We've got more show. And we may tease the next episode's challenge, so stay with us. One thing that makes dating um, particularly weird for me is I have a PhD in physics, and guys don't know how to handle it. Like, I got a PhD in physics because, like, I love understanding how the universe works, and I hate getting laid. <laughs> you know? Like, the other night, I was at a party, and I was telling this guy that I have a PhD in physics, and I work in quantum computing, and then he started explaining to me how quantum computers work. <laughs> yeah. So I slept with him. (laughs) That will teach him. (laughs) He was wrong, by the way. (laughs) He was wrong. He was uh, British, and real story, his name was Clit Romney. (laughs) Like, initially, I was afraid to make out with him because he's British, you know? Yeah, like, they have the extra row of teeth. (laughs) But he had moved, so I took the British guy home, and then when I woke up, all my artifacts were gone. (laughs) Welcome, everyone, to the third act. Thank you for being here. Congrats on hitting FF a bunch of times on your phone in little 15-second segments to get most of the way through the episode to this point. Here's what you heard. I want to do an impression of what they heard. Sure. How about... How about... <laughs> third act Matt the master impressionist and, and, and that's this. how they hear the episode that was very good but I wish you had included one little fast forwarded snippet of your sexual whining so take another crack uh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah okay yeah. I'll try ep <laughs> ep I am fine third act boom that's how you that's hear it, it. Yeah. that's it perfect yeah, perfect that's impression the whole of what, episode <laughs> of what you guys just heard uh thank you for being here there there are some thanks we want to uh to put out there i want to thank the letter writer for sending in that letter we love these letter writing episodes we really like giving you advice and i think we've really nailed it with this competitive advice thing dudes i think this is the way to go so uh, to our I, listeners, I think it's you, the only way to go. It's the only it's way capitalistic. to go. It's capitalistic. You know what I mean? Like, let's throw some capitalism into helping. Well, and also there's a winner, but more importantly, there's two losers. And that is what I like in any content I consume. <laughs> someone losing. And I think Well, and I, was, I have, I lost and so did Andrew so and did we Andrew. have companionship. Yeah. And so we're winning, together. Losing, companionship. But call to action. Yeah. If you have- at least I have, at least I have like a companion at my level. Yeah. You're alone. You're alone where you are. But Ben and I, yes. we have we have something that bonds us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. In fact, we have a we have a losers only dinner we go to. Andrew and I, since we've lost together, have been sharing a bed. So, oh well, listen. We call um, it the losers' bed. <laughs> nobody ever said the mountaintop was full of friendship. It takes a special breed <laughs> to forge ahead alone <laughs> to see what others have not seen. Uh, ah, but that is oh, my oh. first win in competitive advice and a call to action to our listeners. We, if you have anything in your world that needs improving, hit us up and we can offer our advice. And an additional thanks goes to all the great teachers out there. It is a hard job and we appreciate you doing it. And to all the great teachers who we had in our lives, thank you so much. You matter immensely in ways you don't even know. Um, yeah, another, that's you know, right. Dr. G, what up, Dr. G? What up? Thanks for flunking me and believing in me. I like to think that was Warren G that did that. Yes. Yeah, it War- was. Warren Regulators. G taught you yep. physics <laughs> in Maine. Yeah, he did. It all tracks. Yep. It is time in the set, in the uh, episode for some good fucking news. Uh, first piece of good news, though, I'd have to say I won. There was no tie, so we don't mm. have to summon in producer Ron to be the tiebreaker. And that's sort of a, that's good news in itself. You know what I mean? Well, also if you want to hear producer Ron's thoughts, cause he was a teacher as a substitute teacher for a bit and whatnot. And, and his, I think he was a real teacher. That, I think he was an all the way teacher. Yes. Uh, he was an all the way teacher, not a halfway teacher. Mm-mm. Cause there ain't no thing as halfway teachers. And, and I, I can't remember if he was an all the way that. teacher or an around the way teacher. You know what I mean? Like I need an around the way teacher. I feel like he might. Have I been, don't know. I don't know either. 
uh, well, you have to tune into a, the fourth right act away, on teacher. Patreon to find out all yes. that stuff. But the yeah, point is, subscribe Ron has to some, the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Ron's yeah. got some very good teaching advice. He's willing to share. Uh, fourth act is always a lot of fun, and we will be on there as well. So on Patreon, get on there and you get the fourth act of this podcast. But does anybody else have any good news they'd like to share? I, I've got a good. I I wanted to bring this one uh, because this is for you, Adam. <laughs> Uh, and actually, Andrew, I guess, too, as well, because Andrew is a little bit of a bird nerd himself. Oh, my God. The winds uh, keep no, on coming. No, not really. No, no, keep never on mind. Coming. He's not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there was a great story about this person just walking along a beach in Oregon. Uh, at, at, I think it was at sunrise. I believe it was very early in the day. Uh, and the person is walking along the beach and spots a bird, takes a couple photos of it, thinking it's a very a beautiful bird. Then turns out this bird is a very, very mega, super rare uh, uh, species of bird called the blue rock thrush. Uh, and it has never been seen in the United States. It has never been seen uh, on in the continental U.S. or Alaska. Uh, it is indigenous to Asia and parts of Europe. Smash cut to 20 years from now when this invasive species is like the only bird you see. Andrew, <laughs> this is some good fucking some You're good right. News. You're right. I'm ben, sorry. I love I'm sorry. that you brought this story to us. Um, I love that you presented it to me as if I hadn't heard it. In what world? Do you think I have not come across this story? You know, you don't think everyone was texting. You don't think I kind of am. I that know guy in you're Oregon? a fucking bird pussy, and I know that, and I should have bird known. pussy. He's a bird <laughs> pussy, and I know this. And I that's, sh- the, that's the main term for birding. <laughs> it's you want to go bird pussy? Look at that guy with his binoculars. <laughs> hey, put your. I, uh, uh, and, uh, I this this bird though. They said there was one other time uh, that they thought that perhaps one had been seen, uh, and it was in 1997, and then they wrote it off as being uh, likely a missighting or just a misidentification because this bird is so rare. Exactly. Uh, it turns so, out in 97, they saw Ben's band blue rock thrush, not the actual bird. So it was a sort of yes. misidentification, just a cross cross. Well, we streams. were on tour with Blue Oyster Cult, right, 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 uh, right. And it was the Blue Rock, the Rock Thrush Blue Oyster Cult tour, right? Uh, a Blue Period, the Blue Period tour, and, and so, there was some confusion there. But this bird was seen and uh, confirmed, and yeah, that rules. That's a crazy. Yeah, it's a grail bird, apparently. This is a very rare bird for birders. It's a big deal, and this dope, just like walking down the beach, is like, man, look at that! I'll take this picture, post it on a thread, and everybody's like, holy fuck! And it's an adorable photo. We'll, we we should post it up on 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 the patreon because this is a cute little bird a little fat little bird with all kinds of first first wait first can we reinforce the patreon door so it doesn't get blown down when we when (laughs) we post up this picture of the blue rock i'm worried i'm worried about the architecture of the patreon when so many people are 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 trampling each other to get in and see this fucking picture it stinks as Adam says, it stinks it really bad. It stinks. It does. Ben, I love I'm just that saying story. you could bring some good news for me once in a while. No, That's well, all I'm saying. Oh, I'm maybe sorry. One, because I, the, maybe the throw shape, me. Maybe the throw me a bone. The dice are set in stone. They've been set like that for decades. <laughs> no one's changed it. If I, if anybody... Ch- That's not even true. That's not even true. <laughs> dice There's all kinds of creative dice, dice out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, that's our good fucking news for the day. Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody ready for this? I, Andrew. Uh, I mean, you've been sassy, and you've been quite uh, actually a fucking asshole this yep. entire show. So, <laughs> can you handle doing this song, or are you going to ruin this as well? Can do we, we do to that? AI it? Are we going to have to AI your plug song because of your <laughs> shitty attitude? Yeah. Go ahead, AI it, auto tune it. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, Andrew. Give it to us. Plugs, 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 plugs. Yes, there. Andrew, you're going to start anyway. What do you got? What you got? Oh yeah, I've got I've got some shows coming right around the bend. Um, May fifteenth, I'll be at the Bug Theater with our friend Dave Stone, oh, who's hilarious. So 
Uh, come on through to the bug and see a mid month show. And then Saturday, the 18th, I'm going to be headlining at 14 or brewing. Uh, they're launching a new show there and, uh, I'll be closing it out. So if you want to come down, uh, check that out. That's a 14 or brewing in downtown Denver, Colorado. Well, right on, right on. Uh, you should all go see that. Uh, I've got next week, uh, the week uh, between the 15th and the 18th uh, spells has a run of shows. Our good friend, Seth Anderson from uh, Canada is coming down. Wonderful singer songwriter. He's going to be doing some shows with us. So uh, May 15th, we'll be at the Squire lounge in Denver. Uh, May 17th spells will be at goose town station in golden. And then we will be at Oscar blues uh, in Colorado Springs on Saturday, May 18th. And get your tickets. Come dance with us. Prancy dancy time. Come on, Adam. What do you got? <laughs> Keep the prancy dancy going all the way to Minneapolis. I'm putting on a show at Sisyphus Brewing June 7th and 8th. Not comedy, funk. I've started a funk band. It's just oh me. Oh, my God. Oh, it's hell just yeah. me. It's a bass <laughs> and me, and it's kind of rap <laughs> funk stuff. And I'm doing it June 7th and 8th in Minneapolis at Sisyphus Brewing. I'll tell a few jokes, wow. but mostly it's the premiere of my new one man funk project. Funk Adam, it watch out. Funk G Holland. Love and Special <laughs> Sauce. Yeah. 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 It's mostly sublime <laughs> yeah. covers. Uh, it's really kind of out there shit, but I, I think people are going to love about, it. Wow. You should do some cake covers. Reluctantly crouched at the starting cake, line. Cake rules Tension. and sublime sucks. So you ruined my funny. <laughs> but, oh, um, oh, well, but I want to hear more of Ben's impression of, of that. That he was <laughs> bumping, thumping in time. Our live good. show comes up on May 25th <laughs> with Matt <laughs> Knudsen and Caroline Williams. I She'll be hear, there as well. I can hear sound people, like, you sound like an Oompa Loompa I can, in I can Willy hear Wonka. People <laughs> asking for refunds. Like tickets that were purchased for our live show are being returned <laughs> right now. Uh, that is our live show, though, is happening uh, on May 25th, Saturday, May 25th. As always, last Saturday of the month and this month, it is headliner Matt Knudsen and Caroline Williams. And I checked and tickets are already starting to move for this. Holy so shit. you're going to want to get yours now because this show is going to kick ass. As always, the tickets for all of these shows that we just mentioned are down below in the show notes. Who wants to try to beat the best time for these for these right now? I don't Who know if we should do a thirteen point nine or you should thirteen point nine. Thirteen point nine. Do it or as should, cake. Yeah, I think you should do it as cake. Okay. All right. Quick credits. Here we go. Producer Ron <laughs> Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I regret it, and I'm. Taking oh, it you were over. going into you were going into the B-52s there for a second. Ron Doyle's it's... at the starting line. Oh God! Mike Henderson is help recording us live. Okay. Theme <laughs> music brought by Charlie Continental. And a long you... jacket. And you can follow us on social media at Grolix Comedy. It's hard. Nothing rhymes with Continental. Uh, you can also support yeah. us and get ad free episodes <laughs> and all kinds of other perks on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Grolic saves. And the next episode, Ooh, doggy, we've got a real big surprise for you all. Are we going to do a guest? Maybe we do a guest. Is that let's the, do a uh, guest. should we do a, should we do a big guest? Should we do a big yeah, fucking let's do guest? A, let's, uh, do let's, do a, guest. let's do a super guest. Let's do a super guest. Let's right. do a super guest. Let's do Beth Stelling. Let's get Beth Stelling on the Whoa, podcast. Whoa! Holy shit! Girl Whoa. daddy in the house. Heck yeah. We'll be back next Tuesday um, with Beth Stelling. In the meantime, Ben. Play us out, Charlie! <laughs> cake was disturbing yeah that was that was off-putting <laughs> reluctantly crouched at the starting line